Well, good morning. Day 156 of our daily broadcast from Shore Hope Church for friends and family and those who join with us each day uh, to uh, be encouraged by God's word. The watering holes of the Psalms, uh, where we go when under stress and this time of the corona crisis has certainly brought um, stress and, and difficult times and difficult decisions to many um, and particularly at the moment where the fallout of the effect on the economy is starting to show and so many people losing their jobs and um, you know we, we we're beginning to realize the significance of the hour uh, of how serious the situation is becoming yeah and we're, we're praying and believing that the uh, corona crisis um, as per people becoming sick and, and sadly dying is is, is not going to reoccur um, but but the consequences for the economy is so so serious um and uh, you know we've got to keep strong and as i said yesterday we really have to make sure that we know who our god is um that we need to be firmly established and built up in our faith as james says that we we really need to um have that assurance in our hearts uh, that we're able to confidently, and this this is the point of Psalm 6 where we're at at the moment, it, it, to be able to um, recognise, we said it yesterday, uh, Daniel prophesying about the day that we're in right now, about the Antichrist bringing flattery to, to deceive uh, those who, who were with the covenant with God, um, and, and how we need to know our God and we can be strong in that and in us being strong in who he is and who we know him to be uh, we won't be deceived Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life if he's the way follow him you won't get lost if he's the truth then believe him and you won't be deceived and if he's the life then live for him because you'll you'll never die <laughs> spiritually you you will know what it is to live with eternal life that starts not just when you die, but when when you make that decision to live for him. Well, wonderful. And of course, talking about the end times, you you don't you avoid the second death, which is to be definitely avoided. <laughs> um, okay. So knowing our God, and that's why David was so confident. That's why he was able to say what he did. I mean, we've got a storm coming in today. You know, all the warnings, the yellow, pink, green, I don't know what, what is yellow warning, I think, isn't it, for high winds. Uh, and what they're saying is an unseasonal storm uh, with high winds. Uh, you know, we're, we're experiencing some unseasonal, um, not just weather, but unseasonal experiences. We're not, we're not used to this. Um but sadly, um, this this is the day we're living in. And Jesus warned about this day. He said it would come. But when it does, and it's here, he says, look up, your redemption draws nigh. You, you, you know, he it, it's not long. So be encouraged today. Be blessed. Be encouraged. We're finishing Psalm 6. Hooray! <laughs> it's only taken whatever it's taken, nine days. <laughs> but I, I hope you've been blessed as I've been blessed in preparing these studies because you know when when you work your way through these psalms and and have some understanding of of where david was at it encourages you and encourages me uh, that you know i'm going to keep short accounts with god eh have you made that decision i hope so um so come on we'll we'll continue and finish our study in psalm 6 today because the storm's coming <laughs> i am the storm's coming and not just in the weather today but in the in the uh, storms of life, you know, they've hit this year. Um, for many people, that the, the storm is about to hit with um, huge redundancies and, and, and the loss of earnings, etc., etc. It's going to be a tough time. And we need to be prepared to what? From yesterday, what do we say? Making Jesus known. And as we make him known, we make sure we know we know him profoundly, deeply personally in right fellowship with him okay so david psalm 6 we're going to finish it today 
Um, he's had all these losses. Oh my word! What a what a doomsday this this psalm seemed to start off on a on a downward spiral from the beginning. Oh my word! This is getting dreadful. He's lost his pleasure with God. He he's lost his physical strength. He's lost what is it? I'm trying to remember it off the top of my head properly. He's lost emotional peace. He's lost fellowship. He's lost life. He feels as if he's dying. Oh my word, his heart is broken and he's lost physical sleep, which has given him a migraine and he's mad. <laughs> I, would be, I would be. Anyway, there we go. But then after he confesses his sin, he's soaked his bed with tears. He has, in his brokenness, cried out to God. And now, oh, new day. He's a lion, a roaring lion who with this renewed confidence speaks towards men and tells them, buzz off, <laughs> clear away, get away, you ungodly lot. Leave me alone. Right. Hmm. I'm in right fellowship with God. And then he's got this confidence now in God and his confidence towards God. That God has heard his cry, his cry and his pleas. And he can say, I am forgiven. Knowing God in his righteousness, his right way of doing things. Knowing God to be holy and just. Yes, he punishes sin, absolutely. He cannot be holy. He cannot be just if he doesn't punish sin. But he's forgiving and he's merciful. God of love. But then there's one more thing. <laughs> Just as we finish the psalm today, there's one more thing that David wants to say. When you and I will probably leave it at that, and we're very, we're, we're very happy that our enemies are buzzed off. <laughs> we're, we're quite content that we've got our confidence, we've got our mojo back, and we're we're confident with man, and we're confident with towards God, and we're, we're, we we know who we are in Christ, and we we know our sins are forgiven. We know we're on our way to heaven. Bye. <laughs> Thanks very much. We, we, we're good. We're pleased. We're happy with that. But they, no, no. David is like a roaring lion. He is not going to give up just yet. Hold on a minute. There's one more thing. There's one more thing he wants to say. <laughs> um, verse 10. So we're going to read the psalm again. And obviously it's the last verse today that we're looking at. Okay. So, O oh Lord, don't rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your rage. Have compassion on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. I am sick at heart. How, how long, O oh Lord, until you restore me? Well, that came. <laughs> the how long wasn't that long in that in this psalm anyway. He, he knew what it was to be restored. Return, O oh Lord, and rescue me. He knew what it was to be rescued. Save me because of your unfailing love. For the dead do not remember you. Who can praise you from the grave? I am worn out from sobbing. All night I flood my bed with weeping, drenching it with my tears. My vision is blurred by grief. My eyes are worn out because of all my enemies. Go away, all of you. Buzz off is, is the <laughs> Go away, all of you who do evil. For the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord will answer my prayer. And here we are, verse 10. May all my enemies be disgraced and terrified. May they suddenly turn back in shame. <laughs> okay, hold on a minute. Right, remember he's cry he's still crying to God, he's praying to God. So David has one more thing to say. What's he what's he having to say? Mm. His renewed confidence in God means that David now believes that God is going to intervene on his behalf and deal with God will deal with those who have opposed David. God will deal with those who have ridiculed David. God will deal with those who have frustrated David and abused him. God will do it. And so David, having said to his enemies, go away. <laughs> now he says to God, go get them. <laughs> go get them. Go get them, God. Hmm. Yeah, you and I would have been happy with go away, wouldn't we? We do. That would be. Thank you very much. No, David, his confidence is restored, renewed. Absolutely, he is fire. This is enough. He has been to the edge of the cliff, and now he's come back, and he's saying, "That's it. 
I know who I am. I know who God is. I know he is righteous in all his ways. I know he is good and upright. I know he is just. I know he is a good God who knows how to deal with his children righteously in all his ways. Now, <laughs> so he takes it a step further and says, go get, God, go get him. <laughs> they need dealing with him. <laughs> ah, then to their, it's their turn to run for cover. David's run for cover often enough. He knows what it's like to hide. He knows what it's like to be uh, an asylum seeker, really, um, for many years. He knew what it was to carry the guilt and shame. And the guilt and shame that he'd wallowed in at the beginning of this psalm. Uh, now, he's saying, go get them, God. That guilt and shame that I carried, that I wallowed in, that I was that brought me to a place of brokenness, Lord, put it on them. <laughs> go, go get them, God. That they know what it is to wallow in shame and guilt for what they've done. Hmm. What was on him has now been reversed. And now will be upon those who have acted the way they have towards him. Confession, let's summarise where we're at as we conclude um, this quite remarkable little psalm. Um, confession starts with a heart that is sensitive to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Um, I put as a, a trailer on yesterday's study, the confession of sin lets the light of God's forgiveness shine through <clears throat> the moment that we open our mouth and confess our sin john says it john 1 john 1 verse 9 if we confess our sin he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness don't forget that look we have that have that scripture in in the center of your mind as you as you've gone through psalm 6 <clears throat> And and so confession of sin lets the light of God's forgiveness. Because when we're in the guilt and the shame, as David was, it's it's a dark place. It is a dark, dark place. And I don't know your situation today. I don't know whether you're maybe in a dark place and they're carrying some stuff um, that, that needs to be dealt with. And, you know... Confession, as I just said, it starts with a heart that is sensitive to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Maybe the Holy Spirit has been bringing to your memory, like David's memory, when when he was considering his enemies and Absalom, and his memory goes back to Bathsheba, and then he goes back and he thinks, oh, what did I do? And then he remembers, oh, Uriah, oh, adultery that turns into murder to cover up the lie. Oh, you, you know, he's beside himself with grief and he has a sensitive heart. A sensitive heart to the conviction of the Holy Spirit that brings him into a right fellowship again with God when, when, he, when he confesses his sin. So if you're in a dark place today, Remember that the confession of sin, when you confess your sin, the light of God's forgiveness will shine through that gloom and that darkness. It will, you know, we said that John says at the beginning of his gospel that uh, when Jesus comes as the light, um, you know, the light of truth of God's word, um, it, it, the darkness cannot understand it, cannot overcome it, cannot comprehend it, cannot deal with it. The, the light of God's forgiveness shine into you and through you today. Don't go another day in that darkness. I, I, just a, one more thing I, I th thought we should say, it's always good to keep short accounts with God. You know, um, we really, I think it's Ephesians 4, we're encouraged, you know, not, not to go to bed, carrying that anger that that sin 
you know don't 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 let the sun go down on it um <laughs> deal with it keep short accounts with god um you know when we when we fail and fall and and we don't make the right choice and we make the wrong decision or we we speak in a in an abrupt way or we we don't show the patience that we should and ah, 1 Corinthians 13 remember love is patient love is kind put your name in that and just see how how far you get through the list <laughs> david is patient david is kind yeah yeah well we know god is and 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 this is a truth that i came across as well which was i thought really so well said really um um just as it is in our nature to sin so it is in god's nature to forgive those who repent hmm. okay we fall and fail we get it wrong but that's our nature um and, and we've in christ he's given us a new nature that we've taken off the old and put on the new and there's a battle royal taking place um and uh, when we do mess up 1 john 1 verse 9 confess your sin he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness praise god for that <clears throat> but um, we need to make sure all the time that we resist sin pursue righteousness and follow after god in these days um let's just remind ourselves of the song that the that the israelites were were, were taught by moses and were were uh, made to sing um come on deuteronomy chapter 32 i'm just going to read the first four verses listen O heavens and i will speak hear O earth the words that i say let my teaching fall on you like rain. Let my speech settle like dew. Let my words fall like rain on tender grass, like gentle showers on young plants. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. How glorious is our God. He is the rock. His deeds are perfect. Everything he does is just and fair. He is a faithful God who does no wrong. How just and upright is he just re rejoice in how good god is and he is just and fair good and upright and that way we can say i know where i'm gonna stake my claim and it's not in my ability nothing i can do nothing no strength that i could muster it's all found in christ and my decision is i'm gonna live for him uh so just a proverb to finish today proverbs 28 verse 13 people who conceal their sins will not prosper but if they confess and turn from them they will receive mercy oh how good is that okay if you try and conceal your sin there's the warning you will not prosper but if you're ready to confess and turn from sinful ways then you will receive mercy because our god is a merciful god how good is that i pray that you've really been blessed uh with a short psalm uh, that's taken just a few days to cover um but i i i really believe that in the last few weeks particularly as we've looked at these opening psalms of david um <clears throat> his morning and evening prayers that they've really spoken to different individuals maybe they've spoken to you be blessed today respond confession starts with a sensitive heart to the conviction of the holy spirit respond to him today heavenly father we thank you for your word that brings us to a place of confession where we keep short accounts with you that we will know and rejoice like david did 
over your forgiveness that is poured into our hearts that we might live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.